It's Wednesday night, April the 29th, and we're continuing our study of the Old Testament, a series of messages we've called New Lessons from the Old Testament. And the last couple of weeks, we've been in uh, the book of Psalms. As a matter of fact, we've been in Psalms for quite a while. But coming out of Easter, we looked at the 137th Psalm, the 138th Psalm, and so you'll not be surprised tonight that we're at Psalm 139. It's a very familiar passage. It's uh, got some powerful teachings in it, and we'll hope to get about halfway through it tonight. I do want to encourage you to understand this is a Psalm of David. It's written to the chief musicians, and it's just a great reminder to you and me how wonderful God is because he's a personal God. How wonderful it is that the greatness of God touches my life. Pick up at verse 1 with me if you would. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassed my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all of my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high and I cannot attain unto it. I think this might be a prayer. I think David is saying here, Lord, you, you know me. You searched me. You know, so often we're searching for all the great secrets of this world and all the great secrets of God and all the great things that we search and study for. Isn't it good to know that God knows you? I want you to understand that it's not just that God knows everything. It's that God knows you. Now, I would remind you that many of the pagan gods in David's culture and many of them today uh, don't believe you can have a personal relationship. Uh, many false religions don't teach intimacy. They teach that God's afar off and that you have to earn this and you have to do this. And maybe, just maybe, someday you'll find out if you get to reach the higher plane. But I want to tell you something. God knows you. You know, it's great to know that it's not just that God knows everything. He does, by the way. But he knows me. It's not just that God is everywhere, but he's everywhere I am. He's everywhere I go. He is everywhere with me. It's not just that God created everything, but God created me and he created you. What an incredible blessing to know that any small thoughts we may have about God are basically way too small because we got a great God who knows all that we are. You know, my sitting down, you know, my rising up, David basically says, God knows everything about me from the morning to the night. Jesus would later remind us that God even knows the number of hairs on your head. A little easier for me nowadays than it is for others. These are not just casual things to consider. These are incredible things to contemplate. When I take a seat, or when I leave it, when I walk down the path, when I mow my yard, when I lay down at night, God is with me. There's a great promise here for us. Uh, we see the, the power of this, that God is, is excited and emphatic about knowing you. He knows you. He loves you. You understand my thoughts are far off. See, God not only knows the big things, but God knows even the smallest aspects of our everyday life. He knows our thoughts. He knows our words before we speak them. There is nothing hidden from him. He is acquainted with all of our ways. You know, so often we talk of a divine knowledge and forethought and all these great theological words. I just want to remind you that David said God knows every word and every thought. God is God by definition. He knows every word of my tongue, and honestly, that should have a bearing on my speech. He knows my thoughts. That should have a bearing on my thoughts. He knows my actions. That should have a bearing on my actions. He knows me. He's got me from behind and before. He's hedged us about. He's protected us. If it's true for David, it is true for all of us who follow the Lord. You know, it might be a bit uncomfortable to think about the fact that God knows everything you do and everything you say and every thought you have. That's why we're to be made in the image of Christ. That's why we're to work to be more Christ-like. That's why we're supposed to fill our hearts and minds with the things of God. That's why we're to think about things that are pure and noble and just and true and of good report. That's why we're to let the word of truth fill our lives. Notice he reminds us that he put his hand on us. Now, that's not a hand of judgment. It's not a hand of oppression. It's not a hand of punishment. It's a hand of grace. He touched us. He loves us. 
It doesn't remind us simply of his omniscience, but it reminds us of his omnibenevolence. He loves us. David would say, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. David understood that God knew him better than he knew himself, and what a wonderful yet humble reality. God knows us. It's too wonderful for me. Have you ever thought about how much God thinks about you? Have you ever thought about how wonderful it is that God knows you and loves you anyway? Pick up in verse 7. Where, whither shall I go from your spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend to the heavens, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, and darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Where can I go from your spirit? Now, this is a, a powerful passage for us to be reminded of. God says in his word through David here that he is everywhere. Notice the, the text here. In the verses, he says, Thy spirit, thy presence, thou art with me, thy hand, thy right hand. Darkness cannot hide from thee. God is everywhere. He is a reminder for us. Your spirit, your presence. What a powerful reminder that God's presence is with us. I would encourage you today to read this text and spend a little bit of time thinking about the, the power of God's glory, whether it's in heaven or whether it's in earth or or whether it's under the earth. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Now, David did not describe this, meaning the, the, the hell, the idea of eternal damnation, uh, more the underneath, the, the hither regions, the, the places below. I heard an old preacher one time was asked if he believed Jesus was in hell, and he said he believed he stoked in the flames. Now, I think that's more symbolic in imagery than, than perhaps biblical. I think the very definition of hell is the absence of God in that eternal torment. David is saying there's no place we can hide from God. I'll tell you, God knows who he's condemned. God knows who's turned away his mercies. And I think that the most tormenting part of hell would be the remembrance, the knowledge that you turned down the love of God. And that memory will be shaking you forever and ever and ever. That it didn't have to be that way that you could have embraced his love and come to him. I would encourage you that heaven is the seat of God's glory, the creation is the scene of his providence, and even the grave is a place where he demonstrates his power. Thou art in heaven. Thou art in the earth, in the water, in the space, in the sea. You're everywhere. Wings of the morning is some beautiful poetry here. He reminds us that he fills the morning sky from east to west, and as some of that biblical poetry, as the sun would, would fly across the sky, we we see this idea that David could go from morning till night. He could go from the east to the west, and God would be there. But there's also this picture of light. You see, light always moves. Lightning flashes so quick from miles away. David says, I can't get away from your light. Even your hand would lead me. He's assured of the constant presence of God's hand. Matter of fact, Paul would tell us in Romans 8, wouldn't he, that God uh, is, we cannot be separated from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Romans 8, 38 and 39. In fact, God's right hand, once again, that hand of skill and strength would hold David no matter what might come. For even the night sky shall be light about me. You see, God's presence with David was a constant light in darkness. Maybe this is a reminder of the Old Testament. You remember during the Exodus experience that God's presence was a night that shines as the day. There was a pillar of clouds and a pillar of fire, and it guided the people. You see, darkness cannot conceal us in our deeds from the light of God's presence. Oftentimes, what we do in the dark, we think, has been concealed from man, but not from God. There's no hiding place. And it's this God who knows me and who knows all about me and who's ever with me He's the one who formed me. Look at verse 13. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in, in my mother's womb. If I, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee 
when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect or incomplete. And in thy book of all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. You formed me in my inward parts, the Bible tells us. The God who knows us and who loves us molded us as a child in our mother's womb. And I would remind you again that we believe that life, precious as it is, begins at conception. We believe that God is the creator of life. God is the sustainer of life. And ultimately, it's God who's the taker of life. David affirms that for here. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, there's nothing more exciting than when a baby's born. Oh, we get all excited. We go in there and we, we start counting fingers and toes. And, you know, we start trying to touch them and Google their nose and stuff and just kind of play a little, you know, goo-goo with them. We just have these good times. And, well, we just love it when babies are born. But what an incredible testimony that God would carefully and meticulously weave you. He formed you. You know, there's nothing other than amazing about the human body and the design that God has given us. It is certainly something to be awe and praise. The infant power and wisdom of God are manifest in his incredible work of creation. The psalmist understands this. He tells us so much of what's going on, but the miracle that God would allow a husband and wife to come together and create life. You see, every every year we struggle with this. Every so often people ask, do we really believe that God is the God of life? Do we really believe God is pro-life or is God a part of the you know, abolition movement to try and eliminate abortion? And I just want to tell you something. I believe with all of my heart that God forms each life and they're precious to him. Yes, we should work hard to make sure that there are foster and adoptive parents available for those that need them. And we should love those little girls who make that terrible mistake. But we should praise God and rejoice with every new life. We should rejoice. There's nothing greater than two You know, two biologically mature people can come together and make love. But only God can make life. The work of God as he fashions the body is phenomenal. It's a reminder. He says in the lowest parts of the earth, and we understand that the unborn baby just starts so small and the secrets, things that we know a whole lot about today that David would have no ideas about. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. What a great reminder that God saw him. And you know, when those those first little cells come together and those first several weeks of pregnancy, those babies are just tiny. God is weaving them together. What an incredible blessing it is. And in your book, they were all written. The days fashioned for me. You know, God's perfect knowledge did not only extend to the past before David was born, but also extends to the future. God knew David's days as if they had been written in a book. The Lord's writing in a book. We don't know exactly what these books refer to. There are several books mentioned in Scripture that time doesn't allow us to get to, but I would challenge you to be aware of the fact that God formed you. God knows you. God loves you. And there's no way you can run from the love of God. When you spend eternity separated from him, it's not because God didn't love you enough. Friend, I want you to understand today that the God who knows you best loves you most. And he wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants you to know him. Do you know him tonight? You go to our website, fbc-sellersburg, and in the top right corner, it says the gospel. And there we've got a link to the Billy Graham organization's presentation of the gospel. And if you're not certain you know the Lord Jesus tonight, I would challenge you to go there and read that. Just acknowledge tonight that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Believe in the Lord Jesus, that what he did on the cross and his death in your place, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, the Bible says. We need to call upon his name and find redemption, 
through repentance of our sins towards God, through claiming new life in Him. Go to that link, read those verses, and carefully study that. If you have any questions about what it means to be a believer, what it means to know Jesus, you can call the church office. We'd be happy to talk to you. If we're ever allowed to have a personal appointment, we'll come talk to you about it, I promise. But if you call the church office, 812-246-2563, or go to our website, we'd be glad to help you in any way we can so that you can be sure that you know the God who knows you. And Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I'm praying that you would take your word and speak to hearts, that you would do what only you can do in drawing men to you. Lord, help us to see our need. Help us to see our sin. Help us to see the Savior and help us to find the solution. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name.